The following podcast may contain spoilers, strong language, rough violence, nudity. Viewer discretion is advised. Look, it's, it's giant monsters and giant robots. Like, that's all it is. Like, I cannot accept that. <laughs> Roar. Kaiju attack. Ah. Four guys and a movie. Four guys and a movie. Don't I try and rub at your reviewing movies for the show. Four guys and a movie. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Four Guys in a Movie podcast. The podcast hosted by a bunch of guys you'd gladly take home to mama. Today we watched Hot Big Topic mama, Presents. <laughs> Today we watched Hot Topic Hot Presents Mom. Guillermo del Toro's Power Ranger Babies. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think it came out in the States as Pacific Rim. Uh, what? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> I'm off track already. Hey, um... Uh, I'm Rob, your host, and my friends today are going to pretend to be Brian, Will, Tony, Joey Danger, Joey Danger. Oh, All right, nice. there we go. So, um, yeah, Pacific Rim. Uh, Maybe Eureka this... Tony then. Sure, uh, sure. What the? Uh, what movie? What year did this movie come out? 2016. 2013. 13. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> Brian, what's your history? with this film so when this came out i didn't see it it took me like maybe four or five years before i finally saw a movie and um it wasn't that, that, that it, it looked bad to me it's just i just never was able to i didn't want to see it in the theater i wasn't gonna pay for it but um it didn't like catch me to where to where like i was driven to go to, to to see it when i finally did see it i was like this is just what i needed at the moment when i saw it like it was mm. like you turn your brain off it's fucking giant monsters and fucking giant robots and it was like anime on the screen, kind of, <laughs> and it was just right for me at the time. Okay, uh, Joe, how about you? I saw a trailer for this movie. I let out a big audible nope and um, skipped it. And um, <laughs> yeah, I just watched it now, um, about two hours ago. All right, how about uh, Will? Yeah, so I uh, saw this uh, when it first came out on DVD. There's this. Uh, Thank you guys. This might be too old for, but I I got it on Redbox. We might is that what be it's called? too old for Redbox. Is that? What... I don't know. I feel like you're saying you're always making fun of me for being too young for stuff. He's calling wow. you an old man. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so I saw it on off a of Redbox and haven't returned to it since today. You also didn't Listen return it to Redbox. This is my fucker, Will. <laughs> Did you say you didn't return it till today? <laughs> yeah, I drove like five hours to find the, <laughs> the next open red box. Listen, Will. Listen, Will. You don't. Under, you don't understand. We killed Blockbuster. It was us. Mm-hmm. So we know, we, all about red box. we know all about Redbox. We know all about Netflix. We know all about that shit. We 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 we, we killed that shit. We were there That's on right. the front line. <laughs> front lines killing that shit. What are you, you know killing? I mean? Red Lobster. We, we got <laughs> all of them. I, I watched the video stores die from the inside, Will. <laughs> I'm trying to keep Red Lobster open. <laughs> it was a fucking triple event. I'm having a protest outside Red Lobster every day saying open back up. <laughs> I want them cheddar biscuits. Yeah, you wear yeah. nothing. Release the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> you wear nothing but shrimp cocktails. Uh, Tony, how about you? What's your history with uh, Pacific Rim? Uh, I also saw a trailer for this movie. I let out a big audible, hell yeah, and <laughs> got rather excited for it, and saw it in the theaters. Some, someone in the theater was like, is that the Kool-Aid man? How many? And Tony did I... crash through the wall. When yeah, he, uh, I was going to say. <laughs> I then followed by smashing through the wall to the next theater. How many times did you see this in theaters? Um, I think I only saw it the once. Was that with me? Yeah. Okay. I think. I don't remember, but I, I've seen it more than once. All right. Um, yeah, for my history, uh, I saw trailers for this, and I was like, I don't know. And then we were like, let's go see it. And uh, I remember upon viewing it in the theater, I was like, that was just Independence Day. I hate it. I was going to say that. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, we'll see what happened after that point. <laughs> but uh, that's our history. Uh, what else can we learn about this little Gal- Galermo Deltero film? Uh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, 
this was directed by Guillermo del Toro, uh, which is why I said hell yeah. Um, who did Mimic? He did Hellboy, Pan's Labyrinth, um, Shape of Water. <laughs> he did the Shape of Water. Uh, or I don't. Did he direct that or just? <laughs> he anyway. directed. Okay. Uh, but uh, Travis Beecham was the screenwriter. Uh, who said he got this idea when he was walking along the California <laughs> coastline one foggy morning, uh, and he saw the, the shape of the pier looked like a giant creature rising out of the water, and he just envisioned that a giant robot was standing on the shore waiting to battle it, and gave him the you know whole idea for this. The okay, a hell of a <laughs> yeah, and then he went, went home and watched Ultraman, and yeah. uh, <laughs> suddenly got the idea for this movie. Well... <laughs> Apparently not enough of the idea, because there were, I guess, 15 different drafts of the script before they finalized it. There was approximately 100 different kaijus and jaegers made, and each week they would vote to see which was their favorite to actually get down to the, you know, cast we get in this movie. And all the ones that didn't make it are part of Pacific Rim Uprising. (laughs) Uh, The designs of a lot of these creatures were also... Well, they never intended to do anything other than computer effects. Guillermo del Toro did want to design something that could be a suit worn. Because <laughs> man loves him some kaiju movies. And he wanted to... I, I think in case, he wanted, in case to he wanted to bang it in a pool. <laughs> that too. Uh, <clears throat> the Gypsy Danger is named after the Helvin Gypsy, the aircraft <coughs> engine. Which was a little nod to World War II. Uh, the role of... What what were we saying? It was Stacker Pentecost. <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, that almost went to Tom Cruise. Oh, oh come on. Wow. <laughs> that little motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever Beckett there, uh, the lead character, possibilities were Taylor Kitsch, <coughs> Aaron Paul, Neil uh, mm-hmm. Tyre Johnson, or Henry Cavill. Three of those guys look exactly the same to me. (laughs) (laughs) Would that be Aaron, Aaron, and Aaron? Yes. (laughs) At least Taylor. At least I know what Taylor Kitsch looks like. He sucks, but I mean, oh yeah, he's got a look. Well, instead of doing this, since he didn't get that role, he went on to do Battleship. So, what does that tell you? Mm -hmm. Um, Apparently, uh, Guillermo del Toro is also a big fan of video games. So, yes, that is indeed the voice of Glados. That we have in these ships. Shout out to uh, Maria, or I'm sorry, Ellen McLean. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I've met her. You met her? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. At Kineticon one year. Cool. Um, also, for the marketing of this movie, they put out a prequel comic book. <laughs> and uh, they even have a little video you can find online still called Pacific Rim Training Day, which does have Del Toro in it. Uh, he is at one point in a costume of a kaiju, and he's fighting the likes of different YouTubers like Jesse Cox, uh, <laughs> Dodger, and the Game Grumps. Okay. So that's a thing you can find. Uh, also, right. while I was looking that up, just so you know, there is a uh, there's one for Uprising called Pupsific Rim. Oh. oh. It's, it's just puppies in costumes destroying stuffed animals while they talk. Yes. About and then That's it smash cute. cuts to Logan Paul in a cemetery, just jerking off on a corpse. Wow. That no? was a, uh, no, that was, I don't know where. Okay. <coughs> All right. All right. Okay. Moving All on. Right. All right. <laughs> All right. So, okay. anyone want to guess how much money this movie cost to make? Too Way much. Way too much. <laughs> you are all correct already, but I'm going to ask for specific numbers if you don't mind. I'm going to say $200 million. I'm going to say 185. I'm going to say 185 and a dollar. Okay, uh, then. 150? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I have to give it to Will. <laughs> well played, it was 190. Will. Oh, <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> yes. Wow, I can't believe that actually went like that. Um, yeah. Want to guess how much it made? Um, four hundred million dollars. Say three seventy-five. I'm, I'm pretty sure I three seventy-five and one dollar. What was that, Joe? I said I'm pretty sure I know. What's that? I think it was. I think it made a hundred million domestically, and then four hundred million worldwide. Yeah, it was four ten, but or four eleven actually. But mm-hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll, that is it. So guess wise, that goes to Brian. Yeah, I think it made it made enough for people to like want a sequel, 
but not quite enough for them to spend that much money to make a sequel yet. <laughs> and they sure did not. <laughs> Holy balls. Whatever your guys' opinions about this movie, uh, <laughs> the sequel is worse, I promise you. <laughs> worse or made it better? No, no, like legit, <clears throat> like it might as well have been an asylum film, like worse. Like that, that was rhetorical. I've seen it. <laughs> Like Independence Day resurgence worse. Oh wow! Well, well, different different opinions here, but that's all right. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! The sequel already came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's got John John Boyega as yeah Stacker Pentecost's son that apparently no one knew or talked about. Right, <laughs> much like Independence Day resurgence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no, because he was uh, he was like a named character in the first one. What? That because the main character in Independence Day Resurgence isn't that Will Smith's uh, son? Six? Yeah, uh-huh. he's the kid with the fireworks at the end of the movie. Yeah. So like he's already been set up in the first movie. <laughs> okay, he's talked about, but my point is we couldn't get the the real actor we want in it, so we got some somebody to play their kid. They got Gal Blum. What? And what are the, we talking about? Yeah, what are we they talking were, about? I'm confused. Who's who is, Joe, Joe, who who is, is Gail this? Blum? Joe, who's okay. in this movie? <laughs> so, you have, what's this guy's name? Like, Charlie Hoonan as Rally Beckett. Yeah. Diego Klatanoff as Yancey Beckett. Uh, Idris okay. Elba, uh, and I swear this is his name, as Stacker Pentecost. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rinko Kikuchi as uh, Malco. Um, Malco Mori. Charlie Day as Charlie Day. Um, I'm not going <laughs> to say his character's name. Uh, as Rick uh, Moranis, Joe. As Rick well, Moranis as Rick in Moranis. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Uh, as he Lewis really. Tully. When, when you when you hose him down, he really does look like Rick Moranis. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then some other people, and then Ron it, Perlman makes an appearance. Garble Dino. Good. All yep. right. <laughs> Let's get into this. So. <laughs> monsters show up one day who to thunk it all right they just did, show up can i just get something out of the way right now yeah okay so just so i'm not a sourpuss this entire film so i don't like kaiju movies because to me it's like watching nascar i don't care how fast they're going if they're just going around in a circle like i like watching a fist fight just like everyone else but it's like watching like an 80s wrestling match fist fight usually between two things that are supposedly gigantic but again like like nascar if it's just if it's two giant people you know it's the same as watching like cars go around in a circle real fast it's it's boring so i i tr- I, I knew that going into this so i was like all right i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to give this a pass i'm gonna try <laughs> to hold all that back and i made it about 30 seconds till when the, we first see the kaiju and a fighter jet immediately flies right into it and i was like nope we're done here <laughs> And I about immediately mad. Um, I, I like how in the the intro to this movie, yeah, they say tanks and planes and that kind of shit killed one, but it took like a whole week to do. Yeah. So I was like, I'm like, they put it in there for Joe. <laughs> but it makes well, yeah. So if I could just say for that me- was worse though. <laughs> that, that was worse than saying that it, it that they're invulnerable um, <laughs> because so like the only kaiju thing I think I've ever really liked. Um, is the anime uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, which I haven't watched in like 20 years, so I don't know for sure if that's good. But that one, they're specific of like, okay, these things, the angels are completely invulnerable, um, and the only reason we can fight them back is we have an angel that we've cloned other angels off of. That um, mm-hmm. the, the angel's the only thing that could hurt another angel. So at least you're like, okay, we have to indulge in this big kaiju fight because that's the only alternative. But if the tanks and the jets could kill it, I'm just going to sit there the whole movie and just go, why aren't we using submarines? Why aren't we using torpedoes? You know, we have torpedoes that can destroy 100,000 ton warships in a single shot. Should have no problem blowing up a few thousand ton kaiju. Because that was just class one kaiju. Like the, when when the, when class two and three started showing up, the tanks and the planes couldn't do it no more. Uh-huh. Yeah, that I was get... like the Vern Troyer of kaiju. <laughs> <laughs> Look how well the Jaegers worked out. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I will argue using one thing to basically one military weapon, if you want to call it that, to fight them makes more sense than spending a week using countless tanks and, you know, having tons of people dying and so on. I, I will give it that. Oh, I mean, but I know 
Well, right. I, know, I know Joe was out the minute they were like, we used all our resources to make these uh, Jaegers. I was like, <laughs> well, I, I oh, was Joe out. was pulling his hair out. I was out the moment the fucking, the, the supersonic fighter plane flew into the Jaeger like an idiot <laughs> yeah. that they always do for some reason. And I'm like, well, you're, you're not even using the weapons right, like, at all. Um, no, but okay. So I would argue that if you have to fight these things in hand-to-hand combat, if that's just how you have to do it, a submarine would still be better. But like, ultimately, Joe is right. Like, like oh, because yeah. the Jaegers are made with like inferior parts. Like <laughs> they keep describing it. Like you know, it's 100 percent iron, no alloys. I'm like, that makes it worse. That's like, terrible. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it gives you radiation <laughs> poisoning. Yeah. Well, yeah. also, don't get we me wrong. We didn't stop to think about radiation poisoning. I'm like, why would you not? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it takes place in modern that's... times. Like, yeah, what the hell is wrong with that you? Since at least the 50s. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't get me wrong. I, I feel there are a lot of problems with this movie that I just didn't want to get into yet. But <laughs> so, I like, well, I'm I trying like... to get them all out of the way in the beginning so I can just talk about this without complaining the whole time. That's okay. We all, right, all so, have our own yeah. thing. Like, I look at this as an escape. Like, I just yeah. like to see cool designs fighting other cool designs, and I don't really think about anything beyond that. Um, see, and that's, that's just how I shut off. And and to me, the cool designs are already there, and I would like to see them in action against these monsters. And apparently they just don't work. Like I like the, the one clip of the president, you know, saying, we got to... Inject the kaiju full of full of disinfectant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We called in, we called in the pine saw lady, yeah. and we got to build a wall. Just build a wall. That'll <laughs> yeah. solve it. Just build a wall. That, that was it. Take those that, kaiju, yeah, that take those actually, kaiju that actually happens. Yeah. Right. But take what? <laughs> the one other silly thing though with this too is um, there's just scenes later on in the movie where they're deploying the Jaegers, um, being carried by eight Chinook helicopters. Mm-hmm. So I had to look it up because I'm like, <laughs> uh, a Chinook, yeah, a Chinook helicopter can only lift 13 tons at maximum optimum conditions. Eight of them could lift a grand total of 104 tons, which means those things weigh like nothing for their size. So here's so, the funny thing. What's that? According to like official Pacific Rim, uh huh, shit, they they don't weigh that much. Like the kaiju don't weigh that much. Yeah. Like no matter what their size, if if like the so there there's legit like videos and all kinds mm-hmm. of yeah, and websites did. on this stuff. If if if, legit, if they dumped well, legendary well. god yeah well if they jumped dumped legendary Godzilla into this, he would mm-hmm. just kill everything. Right. Yeah, because well, he's like hundreds of times more dense than they are. Honestly, though, if they just rammed them with a submarine, just ram, oh, yeah, they die. Yeah, these they kaiju die suck. These like... kaiju suck balls. They are the worst. <laughs> yeah. It's just times like these, I'm glad we live on the East Coast. <laughs> they're they're made out of the same shit yep. the Michael Bay Transformers are made out of. It's just like crinkly paper. <laughs> they seriously are. Mm-hmm. Although I will give them credit, I could follow all these action scenes better than any Transformer movie. Yeah, absolutely. that's... Yeah, yeah absolutely, Because they're, yeah. they're at the pace of an 80s wrestling match. <laughs> well, <laughs> also because there's a competent director who knows how to yes. do an action scene. Yes. All right, I'm done complaining. All right, so all that to say, uh, freaking uh, Raleigh is telling us about how the kaiju came to town, and they he's desperately trying to hide his accent, not doing a very good job. No, so these, not at all. <laughs> these, these freaking kaiju show up, and he's like, oh, it took forever to kill him, so they invented the Jaegers, because obviously the only thing that can take down a giant monster is to make a giant man robot. Yep. <laughs> I also... <laughs> If I could stop it, it gives point. you cancer. Yeah. Two points on this movie: one pro, one con. Uh, point for them because they're like, we know what you're here for. We're getting into kaiju battles already. Kaiju's are here. They're messing things up. Awesome. <laughs> However, he's like, they came. They destroyed a bunch of towns. It took like a week to kill them, and then we moved on. And yeah. then another one showed up six months later. Yeah. So it only took six months. To move on from a fucking kaiju? Tony, have you looked outside lately? Yeah. <laughs> there's <laughs> idiots. There's people dying all over the place. There's people yeah. lined up to go to sh- to go buy avocados. You it's know, like, you know, after yeah. that first kaiju, there was a certain population that said it was all a fucking hoax. Yeah. Yep. It's like, yeah. oh, 
a whole month's gone down and I haven't died yet. It's all bullshit. I'm it's going. all those libtards in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's not everybody. I washed my hands today. I'm fine. Yeah. There, there was, there was that one politician that was like, "Yo, I mean, the tanks and planes worked eventually. Let's just make more of those and and, this, and, and take them out." And someone was like, "No, fuck that. We're not. I'm gonna give you any more money to make anything else, else, whatever." And then you know, it's it's whatever. Like people suck. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, all that to say, they're talking. I, I'm My just cats going are into having it. a kaiju battle right now. It's pretty intense. Oh man. Oh man. We, we could. Record that. Put it on the All Patreon. Right. I understand what you guys are thinking. We should. We could improve our army, get more tanks, bigger tanks, better tanks, or... I no, I'd saw be going this... to China. I... Wait, wait, out wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I saw this one anime, yeah. dot, dot, dot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I imagine that's how the, the conference call went. This one anime, also known as any every anime. anime. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah, insert whatever anime you want. Yeah. So, yeah, and they're talking about how, like, only two people, it's too much for one person to pilot a robot. You gotta have two people. I wanna know how be... they got to that point, like... Ah. Uh, <laughs> it's just... <laughs> well, Mel like, at first, first was it just someone how. straight up piloting it, and then they're like, we need to have some sort of neural link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need you need to be brain brain access with this robot. Because so, uh, just just moving these levers back and forth yeah. apparently doesn't cut it. So most like um, most big robot things that I've seen do feature some sort of like mind link with the machine, even if it's just as rudimentary as using yeah. your own sense of balance to make the the bipedal walker move. Sure, but most of the time but, like, they're also like semi sentient. Yeah. Um, Other than like what Big O would be like the main example of not sentient or is but he sentient i don't even know he, he's sentient he's sentient. Well, okay so what i like though like this control system though is like it's a really cool thought out idea for how you could move all the parts of this machine and have sensors that would read them all so then i'm like why do you need to like mind link with this robot when the way they have them in the cockpit i'm like that's actually a really cool way of doing it and so, also if you're mind linked with this robot how do you not know there's an effing sword the whole time? All right, that, yeah, let, we're, we'll I, get I to that. We'll get yeah, to I didn't that. want to get into that yet, but uh, if, if I could be devil's advocate here for a second. Kaiju's I don't, advocate. Yeah, Kaiju's or, or Jaeger's advocate. <laughs> You're not so much mind-linking with the robot, you are mind-linking with the other uh, uh, pilot because what? you are basically functioning as right and left hemisphere of the brain for this robot. So you need to be in sync to make the robot be in sync. So, so my, so the my robot complaint... could be better at like art and creativity. Like you don't need the whole parts of the brain. Uh, well, like... <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other thing. Like, like my complaint with with uh, two people operating it make makes sense to me, but the way they did it, it doesn't make sense. Like, like. It should be one is the pilot that can control yeah. all, all the fine motor skills and that kind of sort of stuff. Pilot the other one does all the all the systems and and, and 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 like 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 fighter jets and shit like that. The other person is doing all like the, the weaponry, the, the the engine stuff, the you know making sure the inside parts are running while the other person doing the outside stuff. And like that like, makes more sense tactically. Like, yeah. like SWAT, like SWAT cats. Yeah, like um, <laughs> because uh, yeah, like, for me to have to like <laughs> coordinate walking with the person next to me to you know to like make sure we're, that doesn't make any sense. I'll just walk. You make sure all my shit works right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if one person is continuously focusing on defending against the the thing's attacks, and then the other person is manning all the weapons and killing the kaiju, it would make just way more sense. Way more I think Guillermo was ultimately hoping for a crossover, and he was like, "All right, so in the sequel." We'll have the twins be the Mothra twins, and then Mothra will show up. Sure. But yeah, this... Well, trust me, this also blew me totally out of it when, uh, later on, we see there's someone with three pilots so they could function three arms, and I just... (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I was just like, I can't, I can't, I <laughs> just don't think about it. Yeah. So Will Raleigh here's uh, waxing poetic, and he's talking about how how hard he gets when he's in his Jaeger. He's like, I can fight a hurricane and win, and I'm like, what? Are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Calm down, drunk, drunk Dumbest ass. Thing yeah. ever. But then he and his brother get into this little me- grudge with this uh, kaiju, and. It goes. This is, okay, this is like off the coast of Alaska. Yeah. Can I just say though, yeah. like, 
legitimately like the launch sequence of this thing is cool. Like it's, I mean, it's, it's so an anime launch sequence. This movie, okay. everything in it looks cool, but is stupid as hell. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah about, it's an anime. Guillermo yeah, del Toro. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah, well, both. no, see, Guillermo del Toro can do both. Like, can do both well. But like this, uh, I'm like. This launch sequence looks awesome, but like we're dropping a head onto its neck for no reason other <laughs> than like anime. A mile up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anime is the only reason. And um, <laughs> like, but I, I'm like, okay, this does look awesome. And um, you know, they they go out to there's a pointless fishing boat there for no reason. Yeah, and they they People meet this eat. kaiju. Yeah, they meet this kaiju and um, yeah, start having a little row with it. And, uh, I, you know, they've got, like, a big plasma cannon on their thing, which, it's again, the causes... damn cannon in the world. Yeah. Well, it, it causes me just to go, like, why don't you just have that on the base or something? Just just shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Just, with a cannon. Just but, we'll like... The the thing. But anyway... Um, or those helicopters that drag this yeah. damn thing in. So, yeah, their they're Jaeger gets all... Gypsy Danger gets all jacked up, and yep. uh, uh, Raleigh's brother, Yancey, gets... Yanked out of the side of the head, and the whole the whole thing just goes completely tits up. Then the the, the kaiju and Raleigh up. has to yeah, and Raleigh has to defeat the kaiju, which apparently only took another two seconds of this stupid ass <laughs> slow firing cannon. The, Even uh, though he could have just used his sword and cut the thing's head off. But anyway, then he just goes. That thing that thing's pointy head was fierce. Like its yeah. head point could go right through Gypsy Danger. Yeah, it was a it was a Gamera villain. But anyway, that's um. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Raleigh manages to single pilot the Jaeger onto land, where he's found, uh, and and then then opens the the movie with the title screen or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now we're cutting to Raleigh is now working on the wall. Well, well, there's a scene before there where um, you see uh, what's his name, uh, Stacker Pentecost, uh, is talking to the UN. And the UN's like, look, the Jaegers aren't working. We're losing them faster than we could build them. We're just going to build a wall and forget about it. Yeah, instead of like tanks and aircraft. Yeah. Let's build a wall. Let's so wall. John Snow's there, Samuel Tarley. Yeah. Just, yeah. They're on the okay. wall. I, I just, I don't get that as like it. I could see if the wall had like some sort of defensive features on it that made it like, like if it was a big energy wall or something, but I it's mean, just, it's energy of, of poured concrete. Yeah. It's just a goddamn wall. It's got well, yeah. elbow grease and American <laughs> ingenuity. That was the other yeah. thing I wanted to know is like, well, is, pretending to be American ingenuity. <laughs> is the plan here to just give them the ocean? Yeah. We, we're just going to build a wall and never go ocean in the ocean again around the biggest ocean in the world yeah and it plus works. that they'll just go to the other oceans after that listen as we see it works out great so so raleigh so here's my question why is why is raleigh like why why is he rambo now just like looking for his sandwich why because his brother <laughs> died because he's, he's an died. archetype yeah his, <laughs> like his brother he's died a He's like a war hero. His brother why, died. He has why can't PTSD. he get? Why, why can't get, he just get a free ride from the government now? Why can't I get a sentence out? It just happens. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, because the man is always putting you down. I get it. I get what you're saying. All right. So <laughs> now we have our friggin' meat cute because uh, Penta, Penta, yeah, the Doctor Pentagram comes in. He's like. Hey, come with me on my flying spaceship. It's a helicopter, but since obviously we don't know what those are, how they actually work, we're just going to call them spaceships. Um, <clears throat> so come with me. I got, I'm got. i rebuilding all these dumb Jaegers that don't work. Let's do it. Beckett's like, yo, I literally, like I have literal attachment issues to my dead bro. Like it's his like, memories are inside me. And he's like, stop being a bitch. Come on. You're like, look, I got you a cute girl. You're fine. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh yeah, no, done. I'm you like Asians, I'm right? Out. Let's yeah, go. One of those inflatable pillows. That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, no, the real thing is he's basically like, "Yo, dude, you want to die? I'll take you where you can die." <laughs> yeah, it's true. He, he he was like, "Do you want to die like a bitch or uh, die in a giant robot oh. or die like a bitch in a robot suit?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and during the course of this scene, the wall has immediately failed. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> the plan was just to build a wall. So, like, yeah. the, the kaiju just rubbed up against it till it fell down. <laughs> and then, it, sure enough, a Jaeger took it out. And that pissed me off because the Jaeger just fired six missiles at it and it died. Yeah. So I'm like, just fire missiles yeah. at it. Punched, like it yeah. Punched it a bunch of times, too. Punched it a bunch of times, too. Also, uh, that Jaeger is piloted by two Australian dudes. Yep. Um, and the, like the older one, I'm like. And a bulldog. Yeah. And a bulldog. And I'm like, that older guy, he could play. He could be a cool Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Let's cast yeah, him as Wolverine. Good. Yeah. You could do yeah. it. The I bulldog don't care. could be uh, Professor X. Well, yeah, I'd rather have an Australian accent than a Canadian. Yeah. All right, so but, uh, but his younger son is uh, just an asshole. He's just yeah, there he's... to be the asshole. He's fucking Iceman of this movie. For he's a no freaking... reason. Yeah, he's that freaking panda cub mouth oil over yeah. there. <laughs> um, but the problem is like, and this gets brought up by me later, but. The problem is they had to make him like a douchebag because otherwise everything he says kind of makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you clearly yes, have does. PTSD and unfit to fight. And I don't want you watching my ass because then I'll die <laughs> and I don't want to die. And I'm like, yeah, that's a really good point. And then he's like, oh, your girlfriend's a bitch. And I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you took it. A come on, Draco. <laughs> yeah. But so, she's, a, she's a mudblood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um... We see this big ass like bay full of uh, that should be full of Jaegers, and it it is a legit cool set. Oh, the Shatter Dome. Yeah, the, the Shatter Dome. Yeah. No, I mean this was uh, this was one of the scenes that was done with like some uh, combination of practical and special effects. Yes. That uh, yeah, using like some bigatures. But um, what you call it? we meet the uh, well, we got the Crimson Typhoon from China, the three armed robot piloted by the triplets. Um, I did not get the name of the big heavy Russian one. Uh, uh, Cherno Alpha, I think. Cherno I Alpha. I believe so, yes. Okay. Putin, Putin's Fury. Yep. <laughs> and its special feature is it has a big head. Um, then there's the <laughs> Australian Striker Eureka. And finally, Gypsy Danger. Mm-hmm. But um, we also at this point meet. Uh, freaking Charlie Day and some British guy as the Frog, quirky scientists. Frogman, Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. They're just awful. They're just awful. They're just yelling yeah. and bickering at each other so the whole the, time. Kind of like this uh, podcast a little bit, but yeah. The, the one that's not Charlie Day, he's in just a few episodes of the second season of Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. and is genuinely like a terrifying character. So <laughs> it's, it's funny to see him play like a nerd. <laughs> He's not the one that putting rats on people, is he? No, is he's the one else? that uh, kills uh, the head of the Night's Watch. Spoiler alert. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, spoiler yeah. alert for those of you who are still working on your second season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> your spoiler <laughs> alert. Stop there. Um... <laughs> no, you got you got a good uh, five seasons before you oh, okay. we gotta slow down. All right, so yeah, we get we get the dual Brent Spiners here from freaking Independence yeah. Day, and they're okay. not funny. Uh, they're not interesting. And then at one point, Charlie, because Charlie Day is trying to convince. So all right, they just so, make me want Rick Moranis. <laughs> yeah, not not Rick Moranis is like not Charlie Day is like. Uh, I've been doing the math and we're going to get a shit ton more of these things and they're going to start coming out like ants, you know, you know, ants in your pants. And then Charlie Day's like, I want to I want to brain hump one of them because that (laughs) sounds like it'd be fun and that'd be weird. And then he's he says, fortune favors the brave, dude. (laughs) And I wrote that down because. I figured writing it down would stop me from uh, stabbing myself in the chest. So he's so, got the like he's got like kaiju tattoos. So that would be like someone today having like uh, tattoos of like terrorists on their arms. Nine eleven tattoo. Yeah. yeah, which probably yeah, exists. So. Yeah, I'm just an Al Qaeda fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know somebody has like you know Ted Bundy and shit. So not that far off. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't... just like I'm done here and leaves. Yeah. Like, so now he... and I don't understand because like they're fighting with each other and it's like if you just work together, you could probably get a lot more done. But also they're telling the uh, not Charlie Day that uh, his like they're not 
they don't believe him because he's just got numbers. He has no real facts. But it's like, what facts do you want him to tell you about how this thing that never existed before works? Like, we're just figuring it out. What do you expect from him? They're just bickering. It's yeah. just awful. So <clears throat> Pentecost decides that they got to find Raleigh a new second in command, I guess, or whatever, a new partner. Yeah. And the only way to do that is with sparring matches. Yeah, you got to fight that, with sticks. That's, that's how you know you're down. mentally compatible. Yeah, that's it. In my notes, I was like, shouldn't it be like a like a dating show game? Like, <laughs> like should be like the like the newly game. <laughs> yeah, where you actually get to know the person. It's like, what the fuck does hitting them with a stick have to do with how well you'll mind <laughs> meld? Yeah, you know why couldn't we have just had a scene? You know the one where they have to like pick the different cards with the different symbols and you know like <laughs> yeah where you see see like you know who picked you know which cards and why and you could actually learn about the characters or something no like honestly we got to fight with more sticks. sense it would have made more sense just to put the friggin sorting hat on them yeah um so <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid so mako is like oh daddy please let me play and and uh, Pentecost is like, no, nah, I can't. And and Raleigh's like, hey, I want her. And so they and fight. his nose starts bleeding for the well, yeah. X uh, number of times. If yeah. if I could just skip the next three scenes, it's uh, please can I Mako saying please can I go? He's like, no, really? Yeah, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> like that over and over and over. Yeah. Uh, yes, good. So all that said, <laughs> uh, right. yeah. We uh, uh, so while this is going on, because I am leaving those ske- scenes skip, but yeah. while this is happening, uh, Charlie Day goes full Moranis and actually uh, mind melds of one of these brain chunks. I oh, wish he had it. a cylinder on his head. That, that is yeah. got. Yeah, so he sees he like goes into it and he he sees the last scene of Independence Day and he's like, oh my god! It pretty it's, much is the last scene. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like, it is. Yeah, there's all these aliens out in this. Like weird uh uh-uh. dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Yeah, he says they're dino- oh, the fuck dinosaurs. Oh <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, no, I, I thought I thought he said they tried during the dinosaur. Yeah, time, he said he but... said they tried. He, that's why I the dinosaurs he died that the died out. were yeah, dinosaurs. No, he, no, he no, died... no, they sent the dinosaurs. That that's yeah, it. we had dinosaurs because that was their first yeah. attempt at invading oh, our Oh, they sent dinosaurs first. Yeah. Charlie Day, you asked. Before they're wonderful. Come on. So what were they going to, what were they stealing the world from at that point? What were they clearing out? It was just kind of like, you know, the first wave to come through to see if we could live there, but it wasn't that. that So so to clear, so to clear room for their species, they sent millions and millions of dinosaurs, all different species. Is that what you're telling me? I was pretty sure they, they, they didn't say he didn't say that they sent dinosaurs. That he said that, that, that they tried during the time of dinosaurs. Yeah, that's what I thought he said right. too. I thought yeah. I thought they I, implied that they killed the dinosaurs. My my brain kind of flatlined for a sec when he started talking. So I hope Brian and Rob are right, but like, like, I don't actually know. Like, yeah. there's no way to put it that is good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's either like, hey, here's a turd, but it's got some M and M's in it, so it might yeah. be palatable, or just here's just a turd. Mm. Oh, no, here's, here's an M&M a turd with a turd in it. <laughs> yeah. Or here's a turd McFlurry. Yeah. <laughs> turd, turd McFlurry. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, honestly, like, like, none of this really matters because, like, we just want robots and monsters fighting. Uh, yeah, so, like, yeah, none like, of anything. Well, yeah. parts, no, we had to sneak the environmental message in because global warming and, you know, greenhouse gases and all that are making the planet warmer. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's that, appropriate China. for the kaiju to return now. Right. Oh. We did that. We did that. We did all of it. Yeah, but like like all this 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 filler stuff here is like to try and make the robot monster stuff make more sense. I don't care about that shit. Like we don't need that shit. Like just yes. show us more ro- more more robots and monsters fighting. Like that, that's all. So I'm they show about. us more robots. Um not fighting. They show us doing a, a trial. So apparently they need to test out the compatibility of Raleigh and, and Mako, and they do that in the in Gypsy Danger. Uh, yeah. With full live ammunition yeah. and Movie attaching trope, the head. I never understand. Why during the research phase of anything is the thing loaded with live rounds? <laughs> it yeah. just well, bothers me every why time. Why do they even attach the head? Like, couldn't they yes. test the, like, all the things with just the head? Indeed. 
But Mako starts having a breakdown because so Raleigh sits it off. He's like, "Oh, I miss my boda," and and Mako's like, "Oh, this this man Tragedy. saved me, and my my mommy was killed by yeah. by a Michael Bay Transformer crab monster," <laughs> and uh, it's just I insult the crab like that. <laughs> so yeah, so she's flipping out, and of course the robots flipping out, and then everybody's like, "Oh, pull the power!" And even though it's a powered by a nuclear reactor apparently just pulling this plug shuts it off somehow i don't know i couldn't tell you but uh he she gets kicked off the project again for about five minutes so wait 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 wait. also yeah so we have this hiccup it's a big hiccup again mostly because it has a live cannon that it can fire indoors that's there that's on them but, also, no one tested the override switch before they started this experiment. <laughs> that too. Uh, but then because of that, it's like, yeah, we got to scrap this. You can't be his partner or whatever. Like, this seems like a major deal. And this is the first time you've hooked her into this thing. I think there should be a little leeway there. No? Leeway? Oh, oh with like, I think like, he's okay. just looking for any excuse to take her out. Yeah. I guess, but. He's like, like he doesn't up. want her in danger. Mm. All right. He doesn't want her in gypsy danger. Oh. I, so <laughs> make her build the wall, damn it. I will say the crab kaiju that was chasing her looked pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool, but it had a it had the face, same face as like all of the Michael Bay Transformers. Yeah, but that's yeah. okay. It's like I'm gonna eat crab. this little. It's okay for a crab to have a crab face. It's not okay for Megatron to have a crab face. Yeah, no. I, listen, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not putting. I'm not putting. Yeah. Okay. You're you're absolutely right. I was so gonna, I, was, uh, I, I love so, it. It was like I'm gonna eat this little child in particular. Yeah. So um, Charlie Day is dispatched by himself, not even with a soldier to protect him, to go find a brain from Hannibal Chow. Yeah, yeah, and, like market uh, shit. Yep. And here's where we go to the bone slums, which I think was a cool idea. It's like a neighborhood built in the remains of a dead kaiju. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm wondering which Men in Black movie they actually cut the scene out of. Um. But yeah, it's pretty neat. I mean, I'd go more with with Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, Fair, but it's nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, wrong you, Del Toro. You meet Hannibal Chow, oh, and you're just like, "Fuck, it's Ron Perlman." <laughs> yeah, you don't even meet Hannibal Chow. You just meet Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman. Yeah, in, in some goofy clothes. <laughs> and he he is something special in this movie. He sure uh, is. Yeah, I, he is Ron Perlman. I don't know how yeah. exactly. He's just Ron Perlman again. Yeah, he's, he's just friends with the outfit. He's just friends with Del Toro, right? So he's just like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna come in for a day. Uh, give me some, do, give feel, me some jingly shoes. It's <laughs> kind of like um how Samuel L. Jackson works with um uh, uh everybody. Um, no, the guy Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino, where he just calls him up and he's like. Quentin, there's no way you're making this movie without me. And then Quentin Tarantino's <laughs> like, fuck, I gotta make a part for Samuel L. Jackson now. <laughs> I I kind of feel, judging by his cast list, it's more yeah. that Del Toro is like Tim Burton or something, where he's like, mm. I'm making a movie, where's the, you know, the roster of, yeah. like, people I just have in everything. He's just like, bitches! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, bitches um, so, <laughs> now we have the obligatory fist fight between, um, between Raleigh and the Aussie asshole. And it's just a generic fist fight. Um, I found it more interesting than any of the kaiju fights, but it's a generic fist fight. Um, and then, like, we get the double event. Two kaijus are coming to attack Hong Kong. Um, so we deploy the three other Jaegers. You know, I, would, uh, I would like to point out, I don't want to sidetrack us, but I do want to point out that Idris Alba does give a great friggin' smack talk down to Raleigh. Uh, after this scene actually yeah you know what he does he like lays his ass out and i just appreciated that mm-hmm. um and then we also get a kaiju science lesson which is just awful um between hannibal chow and charlie moranis mm-hmm. and that's also awful but they're like oh we we came up with this and we think it's cool so the audience you're stuck there it's mid movie you got to listen to all this crap hey hey rob have they mm-hmm. is the two brain thing is that still a viable like stegosaurus i legit thing. haven't i don't even think it's a brain I, thought, I think it's just a bundle of nerves or something yeah i thought they had point. like disproved that that it wasn't like I a think, full other brain i think you're right uh because i hadn't i haven't heard anything about that in like years yeah um right. so i think it is like a, a bundle of nerves or something that sends pulses but not like a brain mm-hmm. um so, so i at, could be wrong but 
at this point, though, uh, Hannibal Chow freaks out because, um, you know, it's a two way street when you do the drift with a uh, with a kaiju. So the kaiju know about Charlie Day and they're coming to get him. Which why? <laughs> I don't know. They saw, <laughs> they saw fist fight know. and were disappointed just like the rest of us. <laughs> well, they, all, they, they all have a hive mind. Yeah, they figure it's a hive mind, which would explain why, like, they get better as they defeat them because if they killed one one can't go back and like tell them what happened like it just they all know what what, what the what the current one kind of knows like they're it, so that, that kind of helps explain that a little bit it would yeah. be neat if it was kind of like the resurrection ship on battlestar galactica where though their fighters every time they died they were born again so now they learned what did them in the last time and That's they more get or less stronger what's happening yeah they're cloning them, and they have a hive mind, so they all share yep. memories. So yeah. that's so, why they ha- this one, I believe, it's here where he comes back with an EMP. Yeah, so it's a double yeah. event. It's a double event. Everybody, uh, double elimination. Double yep. elimination, everybody. <laughs> this this uh. contest is double elimination. O- only for Stallone. <laughs> yeah, <only> for Stallone. <laughs> everybody else go fudge off. Yeah. So um, again, this was when I'm like these. Uh, Jaegers have serious weight issues because um, right right in the beginning that first one that's uh, fighting gets knocked around by the tail of one of the kaiju and that got me thinking I'm like these things should massively outweigh these kaiju and should have the mass advantage but they get knocked around like they're made out of carbon yeah. um, and because yeah they only weigh like a hundred something tons I don't know like, th- like yeah, especially uh, Gypsy Danger has like mm. weird floppy bits on it and like stuff that looks kind of loose and i'm like yep. what? how yeah, is this... that just not getting pulled off and yeah it's does not for, seem good from what i read that is like an intentional thing but yeah i don't know why or how or like it doesn't make any sense also here's a question uh mm-hmm. why put a nuclear reactor in something that spends so much time fighting in water no idea Hey, Rub, here's a question. Uh, that's... Why put legs on something that spends so much time fighting yeah. in water? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, the, mm. the nuclear reactor is probably the only power source you could really use. I mean, it, it'd do better in water than an internal combustion engine that would re- constantly require oxygen. But I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, if, if I honestly don't fighting, know what... If, yep. if you're Again, getting into physical altercations... That's better than any other kind of engine. The nuclear reactor, the only moving parts on it are pumps. You know, an internal yeah. combustion engine has a whole bunch of shit moving around in it that could get knocked out of place. Well, like, there's, I can't think of anything else that would be powering these things other than just batteries, which would be terrible. An arc so, reactor. Yeah. So, like... Oh, there you go. I mean, it makes sense, like, all of our large naval ships um, are powered by nuclear reactors. Like, and, you know, contrary to what this movie would tell you, nuclear reactors are not bombs. They can't blow up like bombs. The worst they can do is melt down. Mm -hmm. And even like what they call generation three nuclear reactors can't even do that anymore. So, and worst case, it gets dumped in the water, which is a big coolant, which would just kill the reaction. So, I mean, it's it's the only thing that makes sense. So let's tell ourselves that that's what happened here, because it sure looked like there was a big explosion when, when Cherno Alpha got, uh... Oh, the, slammed plus, into the water and torn There's open. tons of other things on one of these things that could probably explode. All right, we'll go with that then. Yeah. We'll but anyway, like, so the fucking, the Crimson Typhoon just goes down like, like nothing. Like, um, yeah. like what's his name? Like Donnie Yen in Blade 2, it barely, barely <laughs> dies on screen. It's just <laughs> has all this potential and immediately goes down. Well, because it's fighting this big lizard that also has three arms in all the form of a, a tail claw. Mm-hmm. It's all those Chinese made parts. It's all that MSG. It's slow, man. And, uh, but again, I don't understand you. Somehow we can function with this thing. It's humanoid, so it's got two arms, two legs. Mm-hmm. Yet a third person only gets you one more arm. Well, what do you want? <laughs> a third leg? Tripod? No, <laughs> can't third, third leg would sure make it harder to knock down. <laughs> yes, two two arms? Well, what, yeah. four arms, Tony? What are you crazy? He's yeah. got a <laughs> lunatic? Yeah. It's like the fucking Goro. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you, man? Or how about just pilot a giant fucking, like, shoulder cannon or something? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, but that would be that would be an armament that would make sense. That would, that would be a tank. It's not a tank. It's a Jaeger. Yeah. Hey, guys, I got an idea. Put fucking buzzsaws on it. Yeah, buzzsaws. On <laughs> I mean, I, I do kind of wish that, uh, that in somewhere during all this stuff, they explain that like Jaegers have an ability to like pierce 
better right. than like yeah. you know yeah. like like physically like there's some sort of, like uh, Joe you mentioned even again before they had a, an AT field around them and 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 mm-hmm. and the Avas could penetrate the AT field with with their own kind of field so be, yeah. it, it would have been nice yeah. to have some some touch like that like they were the to better explain why hand to hand is better yeah yeah but this is but, also the point where I'm like why didn't you like build the wall station one of these Jaegers every few feet on the wall like, like Palace border guards patrol. yeah or border patrol. And for that matter, <laughs> fucking why, nice to board in the guy shoe. <laughs> why, why don't you have a couple stationed at this freaking entry point, taking them out as soon as they show up? Um, well, I'm trying not to, but I would put say the why aren't there cages? just submarines by the entry point? Well, that too, yeah, sure. them. or like just or just like mines, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like mines, yep, death charges, <laughs> like whatever. Death charges, yeah. I know. Um, I know what I'll show them. Put the baby cajus in cages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Um, that's what that black market was, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the little sk- the skin mites. Yeah, yeah. So Not my babies, Not my babies. So um, uh, now um, the, the the Russians get double teamed and uh, they actually get drowned. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> Tony, descri- describe the two kaiju that we're dealing with here. I can't uh, remember their their gobbledygook. Chinese, Japanese names. So one was Leatherback. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was like a big, like gorilla-like motherfucker with a. Uh, he had an EMP in his back and just big gorilla arms. The other one was a thinner one. It had this big, weird, goopy mouth that it could open really wide. <laughs> uh, and he threw up acid. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. Is that well? Is that what she said? I don't know. <laughs> was she is talking about will. you the, um anyway the so descriptions are great. <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh yeah uh also goopy... spoiler alert the tiny one eventually has wings yeah. yeah uh so goopy mouth uh takes down the 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 tri-arm dude the triple arm guy uh in a stupid way because so this thing has buzzsaw hands <laughs> the 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 Jaeger has buzzsaw hands, and this <laughs> this thing just grabs its hands with its own hands. And, and one arm, you know, it has two arms, and that one has three. So you'd think that third arm could just saw it. Yeah, like, and no. we and they show time and time again that wherever like projectiles fail and punching fails, uh, blades work great. <laughs> mm-hmm. No problems. These things cut like butter. Uh, but no, like, and it slashes the crap out of this. It cuts its neck open too at one point, I think. And I don't, so I don't, I don't really understand the logic of this. So, but, but the, the triple fighter Jaeger gets taken down. Then this big gorilla takes down Cherno Alpha. Uh, well, a- after Goopy Mouth spews some acid that like melts a hole in the cockpit. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. immediately this thing is fucked. <laughs> it just yeah. spits in its <laughs> face and it's done. It exposes the reactor, and yeah, it just goes down. And here's something that a lot of these Jaegers have that I never understood about robots, is mm-hmm. the rocket punch. Yep, yeah, it makes um, no sense. It doesn't, because especially on Cherno Alpha, it's just like this little like hydraulic thing that looks like it just goes out like a couple mm-hmm. of feet. It's just like, like a boop. rock'em sock'em robot? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then, like, Gypsy Danger has one, and I'm like, how How did you get enough, like, momentum going? Like, even though it's a rocket, I get that it's a rocket, but how do you get enough momentum to be more than just you pulling back and swinging? Yeah, also, if you're going to do that, why not have a pointed implement on the end of it to actually use that rocket force to leverage, like, like, a, like sword? a stab? Yeah, <laughs> like a sword. Like a sword, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, like right. almost there, Rob, sense, don't worry. The, if you have like the flames from the engine, you know, whatever, put it on the front side so when you punch something, you could burn the shit out of something like right after you punch it. Like, yeah, 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 I like that. Um, right. so you'd, yeah, you'd be better off using that explosive just to like put it on the end of your hand and just have a big solid plate there to protect the hand and then just punch it and have the yep. explosive go off. Basically, like punching it with a big landmine. Yeah. 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 So, so Gorilla Grodd is uh, taking down Cherno Alpha, and Goopy Mouth is going off to. Gotta like, get Charlie the, Day. Yeah, going off to land to find up. Charlie Day. So, uh, Gypsy Danger is like, it's an analog thing. Like, it doesn't rely on electricity to function. I, I guess don't the, get the this EMP. at all. 
<laughs> There's like some guy so, on the bottom just loading it, coal into the, yeah. <laughs> into the I understand that the EMP can't shut down a nuclear reactor, but like it clearly has computers. Yeah, like, they're saying yeah. analog, like every huh. switch and whatnot is hooked up to its own individual wire that isn't using an electronic signal. <laughs> I, I don't Except, know. You know all the monitors yeah. and all the all the the heads up. Displays. They just said they just said it's shielded. All right, cool. Yeah. Well, you know what does yeah. well <laughs> against the EMP, like Faraday caged objects, which is essentially just a big metal cage, which should be no problem to put on a big metal Jaeger. <laughs> like the EMP just shouldn't have worked on any of them in the first place. But either way, like. Yeah, so the EMP fucks over the Australian robot. So they're like, let's get our flare guns and do something stupid. What were they going to do? Like a... I didn't re- what did they exactly do? They shot what it they did? Or... Yeah, they shot yeah. it in the face with flares. Okay, great. You pissed I, it, it off. It, it, it cool. was kind of like, oh. <laughs> like, well, one of them <laughs> got it in the eye, so it yeah. did do something. But yeah, that's. I, I think they knew they were going to die. They just wanted to have one final shot. I guess, so, but. Yeah, the fucking um here comes Gypsy Danger lifted in by helicopters. <laughs> yeah, it four helicopters, I think. Something like that. <laughs> um yeah, and it just has a, a brawl with uh this gorilla kaiju and just shoots yeah. the shit out of it with the plasma cannons. Yeah, they get, yeah, just a, it's a big old fisty fight. It pulls the EMP off and yeah. I like the double tap. uh, Yeah, he does double tap it, which is pretty cool. Um, Uh, Like he like burns through its chest and you just basically see a rib cage. He's like, okay, I think it's dead now. (laughs) So he's off to uh, off to find Goop Mouth. Yep. Surprise, he finds Goop Mouth. (laughs) Yeah. So the Goop Mouth is over here trying to lick Charlie Day in this like bomb shelter thing. And um, yeah, this fight starts with... um, Gypsy Danger dragging a cargo ship into it to use as like a bat. What's so yeah, cargo ships talk about when you the, uh... take them out of water like that, they break in half. Right, unless they're evenly supported throughout the whole thing. Well, and also, uh, Joe, but... what's going on with the scale here? Well, hold on, wait, Joe. It clearly he wanted some kind of weapon to hit it with. And it's not like he had, I don't know, a sword or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, it would be a good time to use a sword. Because, you know, if he hit the kaiju with the sword at that point, he probably would have cut it up. I but got a question for you. he didn't have a sword. Question for the panel. Yeah. Uh, could, could anyone name me any time it would be not a good time for a sword? Gunfight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Which, um, which of it, the kaiju had guns? It exactly. would, well... It would I not you be in life, in real life. <laughs> oh, okay. It would not be good to have a sword when Goop Mouth was shooting his acid breath. At which point, it'd be really good to have a bunch of things like I don't know, tanks or helicopters with guns that could hit it from long range. Yeah, far away. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. A goddamn shield that you could just carry anything. <laughs> anyway, an arm cannon. Yeah. So, uh, he beats this thing up with a ship. For a while, and then the ship gets knocked out of his hand, and it just goes careening through a city street. <laughs> and I'm having Man of Steel flashbacks here. <laughs> yep. Uh, and seventy-five nine elevens. Yeah. And then, like, what happens? So then, the the kaiju fucking Godzilla nineteen ninety sevens him and hides in a building. <laughs> sure it does. And there's we no like, like, there's no helicopters watching it. Which or anything. got me thinking. Roland Emmerich. Uh, mm. I will say several people took a pass at this script, so. Mm. Um, like what this movie does better than 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 that movie did was one the shading is way better so they oh, look like they belong yeah like way. but like in that scene there like like it wasn't it wasn't like suspenseful you like like you knew it was gonna happen and when it happened it was like whatever it, it they weren't shocked they're like oh no how, how could it do that like it, it, it's it's a fucking giant monster that, like that, that's a possibility like um one thing I don't I noticed that that I, I didn't quite care for or that bothered me. So the 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 main station place, like the the the, the central unit, or whatever, they have all these like yeah, they have all this like telemetry about where things are and have these radars, and all kind of shit. Why can't they just feed that information right into the Jaeger? One would think, yeah, like because <laughs> they're like, oh, there's there's some around you. Like, why don't you just send the info to my to my screen so I can fucking see it? Like, just. <laughs> I get you don't have the sensors on the ship itself on the Jaeger itself. Fine, but you can send the data a link to to the Jaeger yeah. with all the information. Like that, that should work just fine. Like yeah. I don't get that. Uh, so now it's, it's an I'm old sorry, film trick called "Tell, Don't Show." Mm-hmm. So now um, the kaiju, uh, 
I'm, I'm sorry, the Jaeger uh, here throws a haymaker at the kaiju that he dodges, which causes his fist to careen through an office building, mm. uh, which surprisingly, this was a practical effect. Um, yep. And it went all the way through and just nudged a Newton's cradle. So it went off before um, getting pulled right back out of the um, office building by the so, kaiju pushing it away. I was filled with rage. Mm hmm. However, upon now learning that that was a practical effect, yep. I forgive it completely. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so they put a giant arm through a building? Yeah, it was quarter Oops. scale, but yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it was a it CGI. Yeah, it was a miniature that they shoved a giant green thing through and replaced that with the arm later. Uh. But they still got it to hit the Newton's cradle enough to tap it. Uh, that was probably CGI. That I don't know. Oh, well, either was. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I, I, I can't. I have to save my rage for five minutes from now. So, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yep. So, OK, so now we vent some reactor coolant onto this Kaiju's tail, which freezes it and shatters it. I don't know what reactor coolant they're using. I guess liquid nitrogen or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I guess <laughs> the, the reactor doesn't need it somehow. <laughs> and then. uh like, they just shoved their hand in and ripped, like, the goopy spewer thing out of the thing's mouth. Mm -hmm. Out of the kaiju's mouth. So uh, that somehow doesn't destroy Gypsy Danger's hand. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so this thing's like, fuck it, I'm growing wings, and I'm taking us to space. It's I'm a wingling dragon. Yeah. Made, made me think of uh, the scene from Rise of Skywalker where they're like, they fly now? They fly now. They fly now. <laughs> they fly now. All right, so now... So fucking Gypsy Danger's like, oh, you think you got a hidden thing that doesn't make sense that you weren't using till now? <laughs> Check me out. And fucking Mario over here just pulls out a sword, just engages yep. the sword protocol. Yep. And suddenly Gypsy Danger has a sword arm. Yep. The whole time. Yep. The whole time. The whole could have time. used it. Wait, the I other mean, kaiju could have used this. Fighting Which, with knife head. They would yeah. be alive right now. If they used this, <laughs> his brother would have been fine right now. Well, it, it might not have had that then because she did say something about they improved it when they rebuilt it. Yeah, no, but... she said they added a new core. That's all she said as far as modifications. Well, I tried. I was trying so hard to give it a pass. Like, no, no. Well, I, hold on. She she did say they made improvements, including the the, the core. But uh, even if this was like a new added thing. Why didn't he know about it when they mind melded? No idea. Yeah, it's it's just it's dumb. You know what? Or even if he didn't know about it, why the fuck didn't she say something way before this? Right, because like, it was hey, there you the whole what? time. Yeah, let's grab this boat and use it like a bat. Oh, well, he could do that, yeah. but I also have a sword in my hand. It's a giant robot anime. They always pull the sword out. Oh well, yeah. But fuck, like. <laughs> Why aren't they carrying swords into combat with them? Why not a big spear or something like that? They're just carrying like, I don't get it. Like, you know, even like in again, I keep referencing Evangelion, even though there's tons of kaiju anime. But even then they had knives and stuff and like guns that would be provided to them around the city they fought in. Yep. Like, why don't. If the sword is that effective, um, why again, you know, why not use it from the beginning of the fight? But why not carry it into battle with you? You could have an even right. bigger, better one. Right. You could even right. have like a sword prop in the cockpit that the, the pilot is swinging around. Because presumably your rounds for your cannon are limited. Yes. Presumably. Mm hmm. And your cannon takes like two months to fucking to charge load. up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I, I can tell you, I remember distinctly when I was in the theater watching at this point going like, what? Fuck you. And yeah, the um, fucking like, so now they're up in the they're in space. They're like, I don't even know how wings got them that high. For real. Like, I don't just get it. flapping wings to displace air. But they're in space. And he especially with no tail to like. Yeah. balance you or you know yeah why does butt light up because its tail was cut off yeah oh okay. and it's full of full of plastic goop so yeah they um the the kaiju's cut in half and gypsy danger just crashes to the ground fires off its central chest thing to like break its fall and crashes into a soccer stadium mm -hmm. and everyone's celebrating like yay and this it's like millions of i don't know about well it's hong kong so Hundreds of thousands of people are dead. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a tragedy. There's no, there, no one should be clapping or celebrating. 
anything here. Like, it's it's uh, that I same know. problem I had at uh, with Man of Steel. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's been a little doinky doink. Boink. I mean, congrats for everybody who lived, but yeah, let's maybe have a moment for all those who died. Some, <laughs> you know. But, uh, I mean, and that's that's a problem I have with a lot of kaiju things. Um, and again, why I give Evangelion a pass because it's in a it's in a city designed specifically to fight the angels uh, where there are no civilians and all the buildings have a practical purpose. Um, but anyway, uh, so now we get, um, you know, uh, Marshall, he's about to give he's like, I'm going to give the Independence Day speech, but he has a nosebleed. So he's like, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take my cancer curing Altoids or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so my brain's turning to goop. This will help. <laughs> uh, so this is where we uh, Charlie Day makes his triumphant return. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Calls um, Hannibal <sighs> Chow a one-eyed bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, "All right, we're gonna get a brain from this this goop monster," and uh, the, the the like this team that Hannibal Chow has is like going in there collecting all the parts and stuff. Here's where they, we find out that it's it's pregnant. At least he didn't give its pee a pregnancy test. This is true. <laughs> However, nice. um, it's a it's a clone. Yep, it's a clone made for one specific purpose. Why why would it even have reproductive organs? Clones yeah, life fuck. life finds a way. Yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's what I wrote in my notes. Uh, but still, <laughs> it could have been shows... designed to shit out another thing at some point. So that's you I know whatever. Yes, but it like it, because it, it, yeah, it's the least of our problems right now, Rob. I mean, I guess don't, don't think too much about it. But okay, okay, yeah. At this point, <laughs> if you're still thinking, you are in a bad place. All right. So my next note is why didn't anyone think about radiation shielding? Yeah, it makes no uh, sense. And so now, now the kaiju's are coming hot and heavy. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. It's supposed to be a triple event. Yeah. But so we get we get two more kaiju's now mm -hmm. popping up out of the water. Now the plan is to send Gypsy Danger. They're just and, hanging out by the breach, though. And Striker Alpha Striker, Striker Urethra Stri Strike at Urethra <laughs> is uh is being piloted by um the Aussie Junior mm -hmm. and now Idris Alba because yeah. Aussie Senior got hurt in the last battle. Right. So uh, they're going but, down to the breach. Breach, but, breach, breach. Before breach. that happens, hmm. though, um, Charlie, uh, Charlie Day and the British guy drift together, and they find yeah. out that this plan is not going to work. Right, because we see the the clone monsters being actually sewn together by little machines, which yep. makes it all the more curious as to why they're pregnant. But that's fine; it doesn't matter. Um, and then they're like, "Yeah, it's not going to work because you have to have the right." barcode yep. life signature to get through the breach and then gotta be on then the list jeff to get the club. yeah then jeff goldblum's yeah. like let's give it a cold yeah. and so yeah <laughs> they're like so, oh you gotta yeah go ahead yeah so um at this point though the marshal he's gonna yeah team with the the australian asshole and he's like now i'm giving the independence day speech and I, I couldn't even listen to his words. I was just like, uh, yeah, we're independent staying. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, so now they're going to submerge two of the Jaegers, which um, apparently are not affected by water pressure. No. Neither are the Kaiju, so whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. so, yeah, they I go down I would hope not, the... since they do so much battling in the water. But... Well, you know, on the surface, but yeah, you know, well... one would think if you dropped one down here, it would just get crushed. But, you know, the kaiju can come up to the surface, so apparently there's ways to deal with the water pressure. Um, so, yeah, so now there's two Category 4 kaiju, and right when they get down there, our Category 5 shows up. Nice. Oh, no. Uh-oh. And, um... I'm gonna, also, have to take a, I'm gonna have to take a category five after the podcast is over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna tear right through the breach. <laughs> the breach. <laughs> that might happen while we're recording. Yeah, yeah. I I'm think I'm gonna have my a cat with that. One of the uh one of the fours also immediately rips off one of the sword arms from Gypsy Danger. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> but uh, it has two. 
because it takes the other sword arm and <laughs> it's got two. Stabs it through its head and shoves its head into a volcano. So I just assumed this four was dead, but apparently it wasn't. Um, no, it the other... got crinkled. Yeah, the other one's swimming at him doing like a, a kind of like a Liu Kang slash E Honda sort of, I'm just going to barrel into you maneuver. Yeah. And, Tony, uh, hmm? sorry, uh, Tony, quickly describe these two level fours. <laughs> um, One of them is... A crocoduck? Yeah, it's kind of like a turducken, where it's a crocodile with an eel inside it. Okay. And the other one, I, I, I don't even know how to describe He's just a weird hammerhead-looking thing. And then there's the big one that uh, it's like Ursula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Ursula. He even er dances like Ursula. All right. Yeah. So... And it does take their voice. <laughs> so, <laughs> sword, sword is just, it's just OP. Because, like, this other one that's barreling right at um, Gypsy Danger is just immediately bifurcated. It's in two pieces, just swims right through the sword and gets cut through like a, like it was tissue paper. Yeah. Um, so you know what else would have would, would, would made more sense? Mm -hmm. If, like, coming through the breach, if they got some sort of, like, rare material from the breach, like, if the people did, but it wasn't mm -hmm. enough to, like to use as, like, bullets and, like, cans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. it was a, a finite resource. If you make it a physical, like a sword or something like that, then you can cut through things. It would make more sense to do something, something yeah. like that. Yep. Oh, I like that, yeah. Or if it was like, like um, I think didn't they have to do this in a Godzilla where they made a robot Godzilla where it had to be made from like the bones of a previous Godzilla and it could get through Godzilla's invulnerability or something like that? Wasn't that a thing? Uh, I'll have to get back on you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyway, different. like if it was something like that first one that took like a week to kill and our weapons weren't very effective against, if we took its claws and its teeth and we made our own robot that fought with those, yeah, those yeah, could kill it. Like um, its claws are the only thing that could pierce its skin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, you know, the easiest, you know, it's easier to. to yeah. To, e yeah. It's yeah. either you're fighting it for a week with a conventional military or you're fighting it for like a few minutes with a robot. All right. So um, my notes are very disheveled right now. Uh, so the, 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 the level five whoops the uh, striker's ass um, and then gets stabbed by one of uh, striker's punch dagger things and um, calls for backup from the four that I thought was dead. And this is when um, striker's like, OK, here's what you got to do. You got to activate your nuclear reactor and um, take a carcass and go through the breach. And so just because it has a nuclear reactor on it doesn't mean it has a nuclear bomb on it. Like nuclear right. reactors don't use plutonium. They don't. A, a very specific chain of events has to happen to make a nuclear explosion. And it's not possible in a nuclear reactor. All it can do is get really hot and melt and release a lot of radiation, which is bad. But it's not going to cause a fucking nuclear explosion. Um, if, if they had just said that, that, like, the radiation could be enough to, to disrupt the breach. Yeah. Then fine. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if they had said, like, we also... Because one of them has a legit bomb on it. Yeah. One of the Jaegers has a legit bomb. Yeah, but that has to get used, used in a minute. If, right, if, right, right. If they just said that Gypsy Danger has a nuclear weapon on it just as a last resort self-destruct mechanism. Or, like, you know, uh, a two-stage attack, they both have bombs just in yeah, case one fails. Exactly. Right. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. again, at this point, if you're still thinking... You're in a bad place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Um, so, should we call it? Um, so now the striker robot um, activates the nuclear weapon to destroy the level five kaiju. I don't know how it doesn't destroy Gypsy Danger and the other carcasses, but it doesn't. Oh, because uh, Gypsy Danger puts its hand up over its face. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then then there's a scene where the water's gone because of the nuclear blast, and then comes rushing back. And I'm like, there's no like you're not surviving that. You're not surviving the blast. You're not surviving that rush of water coming back. You you're just done. But anyway, um, so apparently I think like one of the kaiju survived. Like the class five survived the nuke, and like um, what you call it? Like they do something to they use like the chest beam or something to burn the num the the category five. Yeah. But uh, but uh, Mako runs out of air, and so um, what's his name? Uh, Beckett here ejects him, ejects her, and then he like falls through the breach, holding the carcass of the the category five. All right, uh, all right, all right. Um, how do we feel about the look of inside the breach? Anyone like? 
how it, like is it was the alien cool world or, or yeah like it, like uh, I think it looks exactly like Independence Day when yeah. they go to the alien homeworlds or I whatever it is. I would have been okay. The mothership. With, I would have been okay with it if it wasn't for like Independence Day and Battleship and movies like that where I've seen it already. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's it struck me as lazy. It was just a lot of blue on blue for me. Like, yeah. it's hard to really tell. Yeah, the like goopy aliens. I think there was some cool stuff there, but they I don't I know think why. They, well, I think they knew that it wasn't going to get a lot of screen time. So they put, didn't yeah. put a whole lot of thought or detail into I, it. So I, I don't think know why a... the Eye of Sauron was there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's out. a good take on it, Tony, because, I mean, Guillermo del Toro is certainly capable of making a fantastic alien world. Mm. And, you know, but he um, I, like they were like, well, fuck, it, it's only going to be there for less than a minute. Just put the Independence Day stuff. And, you know, the thing Independence Day is them. Nuke goes off, destroys the breach. Yeah. He even uh, says, hey, guys, I'm back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, the uh, the pods make it up to the surface and they survive. I don't know how it made it through since it didn't have a carcass at that point. But sure. Uh, that's that's only that's only a one way check. Anything oh, can come right. out of the beach. Oh, okay. You know. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, how, uh, yeah, because yeah. how else do yeah, they get yeah, sure, all their junk sure. mail? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, it's a spam filter. Okay. Yep. And uh, you think it's over. You think it's over for a hot second, but then you get a shot of the uh, the baby um, kaiju that died, and Ron Perlman cuts his way out with his butterfly knife, and he's like. Where the fuck's my shoe? Yeah. And, and, and the that's whole it. whole audience just pisses themselves laughing. Mm-hmm. So in the, in the sequel, how does, does the breach get reopened or something? Uh, I don't remember. I saw it once yes. and the whole time I was I was punching myself in the head. So I don't I don't remember <laughs> what happened. It, it does. It, it was, somehow. I don't quite remember the specifics, but we'll save that yeah. for a different podcast. No, nah. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, how like, does everyone feel about them kind of, you know, their little quasi romance not ending in some big romantic thing? I mean, I was happy about that because the yeah, whole time yeah. I'm like, these people do not need to have an attraction to each other. Yeah, yeah. they like, still get together, like though. sibling. Well, no, because they're not. Yeah, it's it's more of a we have a bond, but we're not yeah. necessarily romantically. Yeah, linked. they're and cradling I, I like... each other like they've just been through an ordeal. But, yeah, until the sequel. Yeah. Oh, in the sequel, are they romantically involved? No. Well, um, they're well, not there. <laughs> uh, I mean, like Mako is. Fuck though. So like, is Ma- Oh yeah, Mako yeah. Is for yeah. some of it. Anyway, again, we don't need to talk about that right now. The point is, yeah, it's they're not automatically like we're a couple just because of this one thing. Yeah. No, no I enjoyed that. That's fine. And then yeah. The no. Movie I, ends that's a, with a yep. twenty twenty helicopter flyover. Yep. Yep. Because they needed twenty helicopters. And that's Pacific Rim. All right, Tony. Yeah. What does the tomatoes that have gone afoul have to say about this movie? Well, yeah. On RottenTomatoes.com, <laughs> critics gave this a score of 72%. Audience uh-huh. gave this a score of 77%. That's okay. their thoughts and opinions. Uh, what about you and yours, Joe? Um, it's no better than the 1997 Godzilla. It's oh, it, oh, oh man, ah, it geez. hurts to watch. Like if the fight, here. like I will say on the positives. I mean, it's a Guillermo del Toro movie. It looks awesome. A lot of thoughts put in is put into the designs, stuff like that. So I guess in that regard, it's better. Like the visuals for the movie are great, but the fights aren't exciting, and that's what you're there for. Um, like I said, it's like, it's like watching a 1980s wrestling match between two gigantic things, um, that, and like everything else is just paint by numbers movie and it's, it's independence day. And you know how I felt about that. Um, so like, I'm not a fan of Kaiju. I'm not a fan of like the generic pseudo disaster movies like independence day. And like the whole time I, I couldn't turn my brain off. I wanted to. I tried, but I couldn't. And if you if you don't turn your brain off, you can't enjoy this. Um, so yeah, the, I was I was upset by the end of it, and I'm like, you know, I, I don't have a problem with a robot fighting a monster. I would like to see that, but like, there's ways you can do that better. And there's ton like this movie got like close to two hundred million dollars for its budget. 
that could have been spent on something better, something, you know, trying to show me something that I haven't seen before that I find compelling. And it just wasn't here. And on top of that, like we get that that generic like thing that I hate when a city is destroyed and hundreds of thousands of peoples are dead. There's no celebrating because you won a fist fight with a with a lizard. Like it's that's just sad. It's just it's a sad. Tell that time. to John. Yeah. So yeah, no, I hated it, and that's that's um that's my opinion. All right, Will. Yeah. Um, I had a fun time watching this. You know, it's like Joe said, if you turn your brain off, it has the possibility of a good time. And for me, at least when I know the type of film I'm watching, I can easily flip that switch off. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I like Guillermo del Toro. I like the production design. Um, CGI was, was pretty good. Uh, story wise. I mean, you kind of saw where everything was going. No, no, no real like plot twists or anything like that. Uh, pretty straightforward, but like we were saying earlier, it's big robots fighting, uh, big monsters. And you kind of get a lot of that for what your, you know, your two hour runtime. So I'd probably say like a C plus, you know, you know what you're getting. Um, it's not great, but not, not the worst movie I've seen by a long shot. All right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go the same route with that. I, I'm guessing that's a light recommend from Will, right? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna kind of say the same with like a C plus. Uh, it's yes, it is very Independence Day, but it's the best parts of Independence Day. But Independence Day wasn't that good, so that's yeah, kind of giving you the level we're at. Um, the like the 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 kaiju looked really cool. The Jaegers were really well designed too. Um, the CGI was pretty good especially considering i just recently watched bloodshot from this year which had some cringy cgi in it i'll save that story for a later time but uh like the, yeah it's just the story that is just really lacking and it's it doesn't make any goddamn sense you know like yeah if you have these kind of guns to put on a jaeger why wouldn't you put them along the wall to fire at the thing why why wouldn't you have submarines or whatever something at the entry point dealing with these things immediately and you know preventing them from getting through and whatnot yeah it's just the story is bananas but uh if it wasn't for the fact that it's uh, guillermo del toro it probably would have been a lot worse and i think the fact that they had 15 different uh you know drafts done i think it was almost more of a yeah that one's good enough (laughs) let's stop doing this Instead of a, this is a good story. So I wish they had put more time into it and we got something better, but it's passable. So light recommend from me. C plus sounds about right. Uh, Brian. So this movie is really a C. It's um, what it lacks in story. Because the story doesn't make much sense. Um, it gives you just enough to kind of put you in the world, but not really enough to care. But um. You know, visually, it's pretty dope. Like, you know, it's one of those movies, like, like when you're watching it, don't watch to, to think about it. Watch just to, to, to see some cool things happen. Um, it's it's a great background movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, don't don't hurt yourself trying to trying to make sense of too much stuff. Like, really, it's just giant monsters and giant robots. And they just trying to find an excuse to make that happen on, on, this, on the screen. Let that be it. Like, um, I'd say I'd watch this again. You know, I might watch it again this week. Shit, like... <laughs> <laughs> Because it, it's a it's a it's it's fun, you know what I mean? It's it's a fun movie. It's stupid, but like it's it's fun to watch for me. So you know, I'd say yes, watch it. Uh, I think the C is about right. Because uh, uh, twenty percent earlier, the, the, the CGI is, is is pretty good. Um, like compared to, to to Godzilla, like the shading is way better. Things look, look like they belong when you see them. Um, and they even use tricks for like scenes that 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 could be. Uh, they use uh, they have helicopters flying around with with spotlights a lot. And the spotlights help distract from areas on the screen where they, they don't have to don't have to put too much into shading wise. They put lights on things they want you to see, so um, that kind of helps you know helps the eye kind of make up for things that might be missing in the background. Um, so they put some thought in, 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 in that sort of stuff. So you know I, I give them you know props for that. Um, so yeah, you know I have to watch it. Yeah, I also if I could just quick backtrack for a moment, a lot of credit for them having like fights during the day. And in Hong Kong, with all the bright lighting and everything, that was a really nice touch instead of just this, you know, usual dark gray blues garbage where you can't see anything. But uh, Rob, um, I'd say Brian kind of took the words right out of my mouth for the most part. Uh, this is this is a guilty pleasure movie for me. Like, like I said, the first time I saw it in theaters, I was like, this is Independence Day and I hate it. Uh, and then 
I just watched it again, just kind of like, oh, let's see how it goes. And every time I was like, okay, this is just dumb fun. It knows what it is. It doesn't really, like, they do f- dump some science in there at some point, but it never really takes itself that seriously. So they, they kind of know what they what this movie is, and it's just a big, dumb robot fighting monsters movie. Um, and that's, especially during times like this, that's what I need. Like, just something to disengage my brain parts and just see colorful crap happening on the screen. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put it right there at a C uh, for me. This is not my favorite Monsters Fighting Things movie, um, but it's... You know, it's uh, it's certainly watchable, even even for the two hour plus runtime. Uh, it does go by relatively quickly um, with maybe a bathroom break in the middle. That's me. Yeah, it keeps yeah, things you, going. You you definitely could like, you know, miss a section and not have missed much of of, of the movie. <laughs> like well, all the all the training. Yeah. Like, <laughs> go, get, go get a snack. Yeah. The stick fight. The stick fight. All right, so that seems like that's mostly light recommends for most of us. So I'll just say we're saying recommend Pacific Rim, uh, unless someone has a different, better recommendation. Atlantic Rim. To don't you <laughs> fucking dare! Oh my god, do not even, dude! I'd rather watch Atlantic Rim than than Pacific Rim too. Uh, Patreon.com. Uh, you are for out of your podcast. mind. Uh, uh, hit our website. Drop us twenty bucks. We'll, 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 we'll watch it. We'll watch that movie. Oh god! Atlantic Rim. Yeah, we'll do it. I'll I'd do it for free, it. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't. No, you pay us for that one. <laughs> yeah, no, you pay us for that one. <laughs> yeah, you're out of your mind. <laughs> uh, anything else, gentlemen? Um, wear your masks. Wash your hands um, regularly. Um, try and only go out if you have to go out and get stuff. Um, go make lists. You know, be nice. Just be nice to everyone. Like it's. it's Right now sucks. So just be yeah. nice. Like Yeah, if um, I could just throw in, let's try and be adults here. This sucks, but it sucks for all of us. We all want to get back out there, but don't do it before it's safe. Yeah. And as and, like uh, send us money. Yeah, <laughs> send us money. Stay home. Don't go out shopping. Buy send us money instead. <laughs> wow. If you have it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why Will just left the call, but <laughs> I guess he was done. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> tired of your shit. I mean, even if you don't have money, just like you know, send us some shout outs. You know, say say what's up. Tell us tell us you know what you're doing to 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 keep yourself sane during this time. You know, like just you know, reach out. Just, just whatever. Yeah, and if you you have any friends, maybe you made some new friends online or something. Tell them about the show. If it, uh, it might help them get through some times, listen to these idiots talk about movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Will's uh, Will's internet gave out on him. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I guess we'll just end it then. Oh, guys. Uh, so, like we said, just just be good to everybody, and uh, just take extra care around those that are considered ex- essential workers, because they are they are really getting the raw end of the deal here. Mm. Um, they are stressed out. Uh, I can promise you. So just be kind. Uh, but in the meantime, we want to thank you so much for listening. If you like what you heard, please consider subscribing. Uh, for our episode archive, merchandise store, and more information, check out our website at 4ampodcast.podbean.com. You can always contact us by following us on Twitter or Facebook at 4am Podcast, or you can email us at the4ampodcast at gmail.com. Especially during these times, we want to hear from you guys, we want to hear how you're doing, and we just kind of want to talk to other human beings you know uh so just consider that drop us an email if you don't mind and if you want to help support what we do like brian said please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash 4 a.m podcast anything else gentlemen I think I'm good. that's all i got that's it all right. i gotta drop some kids off at the pool all i gotta right. drop the kids in the breach what, what category <laughs> um probably about a three all right <laughs> Can I, I'm going to have a double event myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Adios. Good night, everybody. Bye for what?